Hey everyone, this is Dr. Baron Grutter here. I wanted to make a quick video um, about uh, closing models, basing models. Now, I've talked about this a lot in the past. Uh, I've made multiple different videos, uh, single videos, video series about how to use Mesh Mixer, how to, you know, whatnot, how to close models. Um, I get a lot of questions, you know, over time our techniques develop and we start finding more efficient ways to do it. And in this video, although I'm showing you Mesh Mixer right now, I'm actually going to focus everything on the use of Blue Sky Plan for this. Up until recently, uh, we've used Mesh Mixer because it's a, a great software, it's free, it's easy to use, easy to learn. Um, but it's not a dental software. It just fills in the gaps. So it allows us to do some things that we couldn't otherwise do in the past. And um, there's still a lot of use I get out of it, but for the most part, most people that are just sort of getting into um, uh, digital dentistry and the, the 3D printing side and whatnot, uh, probably don't need to use it as much as we used to. So I wanna show you guys how to close and base a model for 3D printing and how to hollow it all without any cost and with very few button clicks um, compared to what we used to have to do uh, and doing it without having to learn another software like Mesh Mixer. So um, again, this is uh, this model. This is, was, is very rough on the edges. I don't even know which scanner it was that brought this in, but um, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna bring in the raw data into Blue Sky Plan so I can show you how to do this from the very beginning. So here's Blue Sky Plan. Um, and I'm gonna, uh, right now I am in the module surgical guide advanced. In the future, we'll hopefully we will soon have a module that's just called model or something to that effect where you can do all this stuff within there. But for now, surgical guide advanced is where you want to be for this. So here's this model. I'll get to this other one in a minute. Demo lower just for this example case. Here it is. Now, one of the first things I want you to notice is that when it when I brought it in, well, look at this little alignment head, this area where I can um, see Sorry, let me close these notifications. Okay, um, the alignment. If I click, it's always down here to the left. And if you notice, I'm supposed to be looking down on the head, but I'm seeing front of the teeth. If I look at the front of the face, I'm seeing underneath the model. If I click here, I, you can tell that it's it's just it's down here to the left, but it's also not oriented right. That's because the 3D environment in which the, the software that generated the models is 90 degrees different. It's very common. Um, I'll tell you that the CEREC software is 180 degrees, so it's just turned backwards. Um, the CareStream software is coincident, meaning it's forward is forward with Blue Sky Plan. This particular scanner, again, I'm not sure which it was, and it just happens to bring it in here. Not a big deal, but it is important because when we pour this model, it thinks this is the top and this is the bottom. So if you were to pour this model, it would pour this way that's not going to work. Um, so same thing if it was the upper model, it wants to pour that way and it would, yeah, it definitely would be even worse for the upper model. Uh, I won't go into that, but just you can try it if you want, but you'll see that it's a mess. So the first thing we need to do is we need to rotate this so that it's lined up. It doesn't be perfect. I'll show you how to do it really quickly. To do so, we need to be in the model manipulation panel. Now, if you haven't used this panel below before, you're going to have to go to panels, model manipulation. Now, if you notice, it's already been selected up here. This is the demo model I just brought in. I'm gonna click right here where it says adjust model position manually. Gives me this alignment sphere. Now, notice I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna zoom out using either pressing the right button and sliding in and out or using the wheel on your mouse, okay? I'm gonna grab this arrow and I'm gonna to try to line up this red sphere so that the two, the front and back are overlapped, okay? Now I'm gonna line up the blue ones Looks pretty darn good. I'm gonna come in here, line up the green ones. And since I was pretty zoomed out, I'm gonna do that again. Looks pretty darn good to me. Last thing I need to do is I want to rotate it. That oh, Centering it actually isn't imperative. It's not even necessary to do it. I just like to do it because it's easier. It's in the middle of the world. What's important is this part. We need to turn it down roughly 90 degrees. It doesn't have to be exact. We're not mounting these on a per, you know, on an articulator. We're just getting it close. And there we go. Okay. Now if I just click on this, the alignment sphere goes away. And now we are looking at it just the way we want to. 
Okay, that is the first step. Make sure it's aligned. Again, if you have a care stream, you don't have to mess with it. If it's the the Cerex software, you should spin it around 180 degrees. This one had to roll it down 90 degrees. So anyway, next thing we want to do is want to clean up all the excess. You don't have to do this. You can just close it and let it kind of clean up a bit of it on its own. I don't like doing that. I like to try to get things cleaned up for myself. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm trying to line up the gingival margins of the last teeth and the canines. Now it's not always perfect to do so, but I'm just trying to eyeball it. To cut, I'm going to hold the shift button on my keyboard. It turns into a crosshair. I'm going to click the mouse and drag. It's going to make a sort of a lasso and it's going to connect the round part with a straight line. And I'm just aligning that line up with what I want to cut off. It gets pretty close to the gingival margin on that canine, but it's okay. Now I'm gonna let go of the shift button before the mouse. Now let go of the mouse. It's gonna trim away everything. The more you're cutting off, the longer this step takes. But I like to make this first cut because although it won't get everything perfect out here, pretty close, um, the lingual gets pretty darn nice. I don't have to mess with that at all, um, other than back here. So I'm gonna clip off this little piece of data. You can, you can either hold the shift button and draw your line and then just bring it out here, let go of the shift, and then let go of the mouse. Or you can do what I tend to do, and that's straight lines by clicking here, wrapping around it, and just using the straight line to cleave it off. Pretty straightforward there. This is akin to using scissors if you really want a clean cut. Um, you know, use a straight line. If you don't really care, then just draw where you want. You know, the better mouse control you have, the more likely you're to do the, the mouse click and drag. I tend to wander a lot when I do that. Okay, so now I want to cl cleave this off right here and right there. So I'm just sort of lining up the areas I want to cut. I'm going to press shift, lasso, and cut these two at the same time. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is like taking your models and shoving them into a model grinder on the heels, just sort of clipping those flat. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now we're done. We're done trimming it up. We're all ready to close this model. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna come over to surfaces. I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna duplicate it. You don't need to do this. I'm doing this because I'm making a video and I wanna be able to show you guys the difference between the before and after. So now I'm gonna manipulate this yellow one, this copy, so I still have this green one in reserve. Now, if I'm going to do that, notice that when I go to Modern Manipulation Panel, it still has the uh, green one selected. If you'd like, you can even copy one or whatever you want to call it. You can rename these so it's easier to identify. Copy one. I need to sneeze one second. Excuse me, sorry about that. Make sure my mic's still working and I see my voice. Okay, all right, so at this point, um, we can close the model, make sure that you're manipulating the correct one, the yellow one, and all I have to do is press on close model. You, this is real time, I'm not adjusting the speed. It's pretty darn quick, that's why I like this, um, as opposed to the um, to use doing it in Mesh Mixer. It cleans up pretty darn well. And I'm going to turn off the original. And when you have errors in your model, you might see some of this, but hopefully that doesn't matter to you. That's you know that's, that's going to happen in any software. That's due to flaws in the model itself. Um, we didn't do any sort of error checking in Mesh Mixer. Okay, so I'm going to um, I'm ready to I'm ready to export this. I can get this printed right now. These heels are not perfectly flat. You may or may not be able to get away with printing them as is. But instead, I'm going to add a platform. I have uploaded these files to um, Thingiverse. I'll try to put a link in this video as well where to find these. Um, in the orthodox software, it's been integrated. At some point, we'll have this in the uh, this version as well. But for now, I'm going to click on this one. It's red. Click on this, and I'm going to drag it to where I want it. All right. And I need to rotate this, we'll say 90 degrees or so. And um, 
in the ortho software, it actually automatically snaps it to the heels, which is super convenient, makes it easy to scale it and whatnot. So uh, what I'm doing here honestly isn't necessary because you can just add the, the platform to the your 3D printing software and do it that way. That's how I've made videos. I have other videos where it shows you how to do that. Um, but for the case of this video, I just wanted to show you how you can go ahead and add platforms right here. Um, and then maybe we'll slide this this way a little bit. Yes, I'm more efficient than most people at this, just having played with it, but I assure you, you can uh, learn how to do it. So anyway, so now this is ready to go. You could export it. If I want to export right now, I would just come up here to File, Export Data, and these are the two that are checked, this one and the red platform. Notice this box right here is not checked. If you check it, it's going to export two different STLs, one for each of these. We want it to export one STL. Okay, I'm going to export it right now into this thing, and I'm going to call it um, uh, Based Model Platform. Okay, but I'm, I want to show you one more thing, and this is I'm going to actually hollow this model out. Okay. Now, right now, the wrong one's selected. I'm going to click on this so that it knows what to manipulate. And all I'm going to do is click on this hollow model button. Again, real time, This the more complex the model is, the longer it will take. But the um, it's still a super quick process. It's, you know, sorry, it's still loading. So you can see my timer just to show that it's real time. Um, you know, 10, 12 seconds later, let's turn off this. And here's our hollowed model. Now, the parameters to affect the, the hollow nature currently are in the orthodontic module. I apologize for that. Um, this will be added to the ortho, so the, 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 you know, how to set this up and how to change these. But for now, you actually need to initially go into orthodontics to set this up. All I mean is if you don't want these cross members, you can uncheck a box in the orthodontic module to turn that off. If you want to make your models thicker, these are two and a half millimeters, you can change that there. Once you've set it, you set it, forget it, never mess with it. But just so you know, if you don't like this, you have to turn that off in the ortho software. Um, it would be in the tools, preferences, and it will be under the orthodontic um, uh, whatever menu. Um, I've looked and I, I thought it was supposed to be added, but it doesn't appear that it's been added yet. So um, it looks to me like it's just, you know, th it'll be added eventually. Um, yeah, I don't see anything to do with hollow and, um, and it's not under surgical guide. So anyway, um, if you do want to mess with those parameters at all, you need to do that in the orthodontic software, but uh, it's simple enough. So now we can export this as well export just these two that's still unchecked Hit export and this time I'm gonna name it the same thing but I'm also gonna say hollow okay so I've now exported the model I'm gonna go ahead and open up Rayware Rayware is the software for the Moonray printers uh, this would be the same process if you were using um, uh, whichever printing software you're using so now I'm going to come into this folder and I'm going to grab these two so you can see how both of them look in here. I'm just dragged and, I've dragged and dropped those. Click on this model. Click on this little arrow with a flat line by it. Find the base. Do the same thing on this one. Click on the base. It's red like this because it's sticking out of the out of the build plate. It's just telling me, hey, we can't print. We're, you're sticking off of it. Um, but anyway, so you can see the differences. Both of these are attached. You can see the first layer is going to print. It's adhered to the bill plate. And one's hollow, one's not hollow. Um, both will print fine. One uses a little less resin. Um, one takes This one takes an extra step to do that hollow. But again, it's one button click. So it's you know it used to be that it was a lot more steps. The mesh mixer to do that. A lot more and a lot more issues. Uh, this has made our lives uh, infinitely easier. Um, if you're wondering, the hash, hash mark here, or the, the cross members, is for strength, but it's also for if you decide 
to um, mount your models. If you want, you can make it hollow without this, but if you want to mount it on an articulator, it's a little bit harder because you have to fill this whole thing with stone essentially to get it stable, and then it can lock. This gives you something to embed into stone a little bit, not too much, but it, it'll index in there well, and it'll be you can retrieve it from the, the base, and you, got, you kind of get the idea. This is a nice little mounting thing so you can mount and unmount. Okay, well, I, I certainly hope I've you know, answered your guys' questions. Hopefully this video was informative and shows you that, real, you know, just a quick review, we can bring our models into Blue Sky Plan, we can come into model manipulation, align the models with the correct 3D environment, use the cut tools to trim off the excess, and then just hit close model, and you're done. If you want, you then click hollow model, and you're done. If you want to add a platform, you can add the platform like I showed. That's, um, or you could simply, I did not show this, if we just export the data, I've shown this in other videos, but I, I'm just going to ahead and do it one more time. Um, I'm going to delete the, the platform name from it because this one's not going to have a platform. I can take this and just bring this one in here. And as you'll see, it doesn't have the platform, it just has the base. Now the bases aren't perfectly flat, so clicking on here may or may not work. Um, I don't know, we'll see in just a moment. Yeah, you see how you only see one heel? This heel is not perfectly touching. You can dink around with trying to rotate it just right, but you're never going to get perfect. See, now it's just barely touching there and not there. So now that you can always print it flat, horizontally, like this, but if you want to do time saving um, and you want to print a bunch of them vertically, well, then you're going to have to take the platform that I showed you and drag it into here. It's actually, I would say, much easier to do it in here because I can bring it right here. I can grab this little rotation tool. I'm holding the shift button to make it snap to in certain degrees, and there it is. So it's now platformed. The only problem is it's also pushed into it a little bit. You clip off that second molar by doing it here as opposed to previously where it's lifted off there a little bit. So anyway, I, I didn't mean to drag on this video, but I just wanted to show you that you can do things in Mesh Mixer alone if you want. Um, but anyway, all right. So once again, hopefully this video was helpful. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. All right, bye for now.